Hello and welcome everyone to IWFM London's London Lowdown, a one-to-one -one interview with an FM professional in the capital. Um, I'm Cathy Hayward, the new chair of the IWFM London region and the founder of Magenta, the workplace communication experts. We hope this will be the first of a regular series of interviews with leading FMs about their career so far and what their current job involves, including perhaps how they're reacting to the current COVID crisis. So today's session um, is going to be about 30 minutes and please feel free to ask questions as we go along um, in the panel on the side of your screen. Um, first up, we have Jason Cousins, who is Director of Facilities Management at Lazard, the world's leading independent financial advisory um, and asset management firm, bit of a mouthful. Um, he's based just off London's Piccadilly, although he's at, at home today in Sussex. Um, he's been there for about 18 months or so and prior to that he has a career in law firms, including um, spells at Womble Bond Dickinson and Old Swang, um, together with working for CBRE at Macquarie Bank and at Eversheds. Um, so Jason was also until recently the chair of IWFM London Region, um, a role he held for many, many years, um, and he's now mm -hmm. chair of um, the IWFM Members Council. So uh, welcome, Jason. Thank you very much, Cathy. Um, so to kickstart us, um, perhaps you could describe what your kind of current, um, your day-to-day -day role for Lazars involves, perhaps pre-COVID, perhaps back in normal times? Yeah, sure. Um, certainly, I'd, I'd normally be in different attire at work. Um, we're a, a very heavily client service based company. So I guess my role is, is in two parts, really, facilities management and property management. On the, on the facilities management side, it's the, the typical role of management of engineering, client services, cleaning and all the functions you'd expect. Um, but I would say to a, a best in class service. So uh, as a company, uh, our clients mean everything to us. So we, we have to make sure that we get our service to a very high level. And I'm talking kind of Ritz level type service. And then on the property management side, there are a lot of property projects. Uh, for example, I've got projects going on in Dublin, in Saudi and, and Dubai at the moment, and a big project in London where we're looking to relocate. So spend a lot of time with uh, other professions such as architects and project managers developing those projects. And I think we've lost Cathy. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll carry on talking and hopefully Cathy will uh, uh, come back to us. Cathy did actually send me a, a, a couple of uh, questions uh, around um, FM and my career. One of those was um, how I started out in FM. And I think probably very similar to lots of other people uh, who fell into the industry. I actually came from, I left college as from a, an IT background, um, joined a, a bank in the mainframe computing and working on um, the cash tills and things like that. So um, slightly, slightly unusual falling into it. I saw a, an advert within the bank for, to help automate our architects department. So I joined the architects department and started developing spreadsheets. I noticed most of the architects were doing a lot of their space planning using stencils and drawing on, on plans. That's what well, we could do that on computer. So I um, bought in AutoCAD version two, if anyone knows AutoCAD, that's quite a few versions ago started drawing our buildings on there, started doing space planning and moved into it that way and my career's really developed from there. I guess what really attracted to me, I think like a lot of people was um, how different and how, how every day is so different. One minute, yes, I could be working on space plans and drawings. You meet huge numbers of different people. You work in so many different areas. Um, so it's, there's, a, there's a lot to take in and a, and a lot to learn and the more you learn about each of the individual areas of you know, health and safety, uh, cleaning and hygiene, engineering, uh, it's, a, it's a very, very varied role. So um, that's, I guess, what's probably mostly interest in me. Um, my career is probably one of the things I aim to when I first really got involved in uh, facility management was to actually learn as much as possible and to work in the different areas of facilities management so on 
Um, I very much most of my career was started in in banking in the first ten years on the client side, and then um, with a lot of different facilities managers and senior people, which I learned a lot from. Um, some of those were involved in the the very early stages of um, BIFM or what was it called AFM then I think it was before IWFM. So I got introduced to the industry quite early on in my career. So I've actually been working in, in facilities management for 30 years, quite a long time. Um, I guess what was really good was to experience the different sides of it. So I did some, I worked in consulting uh, and experienced how that would work, but working in many, many different sectors, um, not just in offices and banking, but in education, in retail, which really built up some really good experience for me. Uh, work, as Cathy mentioned, I worked in CBRE. Again, a good experience to be on um, the other side of the, the fence um, to understand how outsource, outsourcing works and how outsource companies work and the support, uh, which was a really good experience. I guess what's great, incredibly good about that is actually being able to talk to people and professions that you that know what they're talking about, if you know what I mean. They're, they're I guess what we call intelligent clients um, and everyone knowing a lot about their fields and, and, and having a lot of support in that area. And then, but I have to say that my love was in management of people and management of contracts, uh, management of procurement. So I started me much more into a, a leading role, I suppose. I really enjoy leading people and actually developing people now, which is a big, big part of my role now in, in helping develop people, not just in my current working role, but as uh, within IWFM as well. I'm hoping my interview is going to contact me uh, and contact again soon. Hey Jason, just while we're waiting for Kathy to get back, we have had a couple of questions through from the audience, um, if you're happy for me to okay. pass those along to you. Yes, uh, so do. one of the questions that's uh, one of the questions that's come through from Peter is um, what sort of challenges have you had recently around the whole COVID-19? Uh, so what has your mm -hmm. workplace been doing uh, obviously before the pandemic and then sure. how has it changed since it's occurred? Yeah, I guess um, when it first happened, it became almost a bit of a, a novelty. Uh, we set up our emergency management team, which I lead quite quickly. Um, listened to what the government said. I think it was quite clear. Uh, immediately realised that we needed to be able to get staff to work from home. So worked with our technologists to um, be able to work with webinar and get that kind of system set up, making sure people have got um, places to work at home and that they're connected with their broadband and, and laptops, etc. So initially there was quite a lot of uh, work to be done. Um, I guess we had been in a bit of a holding mode then just to wait for government. I guess the challenge really has been trying to guess what the government is going to uh, change so and on when we are ready to go back to the work. Um, but we've been very clear all the way along that the health and safety of our people is paramount. The, um, our, our people, we're able to get them the majority, and I'd say 95% you know, of our people are, are actually effectively working home very well. So there's no rush to go back into the office. I know that Boris has uh, relaxed the rules a little bit recently, which has meant we've been able to um, think about opening up the office. That's presented some challenges in, in trying to keep to the, the two metre rule um, and, and keep our staff safe and actually keep people off of public transport. So whilst we are actually going to uh, make the office more accessible in London from uh, the 6th of July. That's really for people that could walk or cycle to work um, and they'll be working in um, distance apart. So we've got quite a few measures in place. I think the usual sanitization products, uh, we're using a fogging system, in fact, at, um, which provides protection within your office for 30 days. We just laid that down in the office, which is, is particularly effective. So yeah, uh, challenging times, but we're not rushing back. I'm not expecting that we'll open the office fully um, for quite some months yet, and then it will probably be in a rotation system until the government, until the pandemic really is over. I would say. 
Yeah, definitely. It's one of those you don't know what you don't know. And um, the guidance and advice is always constantly changing. So that's a good sure. approach. Thank you. Definitely. Uh, this is a nice question from Wendy. Uh, she's saying, what's the best thing you've done as an FM? Uh, and then also, uh, what's the worst? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a tough question. So, I guess. So is there anything in particular you're proud of or one moment where you like you you felt like you was um, probably maybe flying high on a certain project or anything like that? Yeah, I have to say that I really enjoy when you actually open up a brand new building. Um, uh, and going through the whole process at Eversheds, uh, I instigated looking for a, a brand new building. It was 150,000 square feet, so a big project to go and negotiate a lease, um, find the space, uh, persuade the board to sign those papers, and all the way through to setting up the office, working with the architects and the designers and the project managers to get that building working for our company. And then the consultation process and working with people and you know, it was huge amounts of work over a three-year period really so a long long project but actually to see those people come into the office on those first days to see how impressive the space was uh, with essentially probably a pretty big budget compared with the way we work at these days um, so I have to say I'm very proud of that space in uh, in Cheapside and actually you know, I go back every now and again and I take other people back to the office to show people the quality of what we did, quality of the client space, the services that we provide ourselves. So I'm very, very proud of that one. Um, and then would you say that was also your most challenging aspect in terms of like your career or you had um, ones which you found a bit more difficult that you've had to work a yeah, lot more I think on? It, it, definitely challenging. Um, uh, are much harder. I think as as your uh, develop as your career develops into more senior positions, that every day becomes more challenging. But you kind of get used to staying calm. I get accused of being very calm all the time under pressure. Um, you know, I've I've had incidents at work where we've had major floods, for example, which has definitely been challenging in, in quickly getting into the office, resolving the space, clearing the space out, moving people around so that everyone can go about their their day. Um, I can certainly remember one of those um, in a previous law firm where there was certain some sudden panic. Um, so yeah, well that's that's part of the excitement and adrenaline of our role, I would say. Um, the up the ups and downs. To be honest, there really hasn't been that many downs. Um, there have been some tough that's days, of course, but I see but you found it all worthwhile at the end of it. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Jason, I'm really sorry, everybody. We, um, I have major problems. I'm in a virgin um, uh, issue here, so I'm now running off my phone. So I, I'm terribly sorry for leaving you there, um, Jason. No, it's so not long. a problem. I no worries, Kathy. Your questions, and we've. Sorry, go on. No, I was just going to say we've just been taking some questions from the audience. Okay. Oh, perfect. Well, thank you very much for for that. I don't know whether you, where you got to on the the questions that we discussed beforehand, Jason. Um, we've um, we've talked client side. We've talked a little bit about COVID from some of the questions. Um, mm -hmm. I haven't talked about uh, career in IWFM yet. Okay. Well, why don't I we guess. come and start there? So, how how and where did the the FM journey begin for you? Um, I think I joined one of the organisations. I think it might have been FMA come or something like that or AFM. I can't remember what the terms were before BIFM started and then moved into BIFM I, I'm fairly sure it was back in 96 okay, so, so really, really a very early days really yeah I think my uh, membership number is something like 456 so pretty pretty low in, in current circumstances um, I was a, a very young lad then um, I started to get interested in FM and started working in it and then thought actually this is a this is becoming a profession it wasn't even called facilities management then it was called things like house management and premises management um so so fm became quite new and i thought actually this is a this is a profession i like to go into and learn more about it's all about buildings and building services and creating spaces there's so many fields within this it became quite interesting so and then i decided i wanted to get qualified so I ended up doing a building services qualification and I ended up being one of the first people to get a degree in, in facilities management um, 
and, and continue to network uh, and attend some of the networking opportunities within within BIFM. And that really that's the way that's the way it started. So what was your first sort of proper FM or if it was called something different, the sort of premises management role? Mm -hmm. um, well, I was in, I call it my apprenticeship when I was at uh, Lloyds Bank. I spent 10 years at Lloyds Bank, uh, did my degree at Lloyds Bank, started out on the um, space planning side and doing business continuity. I'm sure you all remember some of the explosions we had in London. So suddenly business continuity became big, then the millennium bug became big, which I worked on. Um, and then I got the opportunity to manage my own building in uh, as a, an assistant FM, which was Hayes Galleria, which is a particularly nice building to be given as the first building to manage yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Within Beautiful. that, um, opposite HMS Belfast. Uh, and I loved it and built a team there uh, and started managing that building. So that was that was probably my first real fm role um and then i decided to leave lloyd's bank okay mainly, and that must mainly. Been quite, a, quite a leap after 10 years there it was yeah so um I, I guess the reason i left was i was one of probably about 50 facilities managers across the country um so i moved uh, to a, an investment company um what there were quite a small investment company to become their sole facilities manager and take that responsibility on I was ready to uh, take on a bit more responsibility. And short, shortly after, they merged with a big American company, so I became the the, the um, European facilities manager quite quickly. So I was suddenly given all this all this huge responsibility within that company, and then create a new office and close. I think we closed nine offices down in in London and opened a big headquarters. So that was my real first experience of getting involved in a major project in in that such way. So. We've had a great question from Anthony Coyne, who's asking, what advice would you give to someone who is fairly new to FM, like, like you were, and, and he, mm -hmm. fell, um, he fell into the area? How would you, he wants to lay the foundations for a long career in FM. What, what would you recommend for him? OK, I, th I think it's a, a mixture of things. One is about listening and, and being, um, being proactive in trying to get involved in meetings, listening to suppliers, listening to your contractors about all the different areas within FM. And the more you listen, the more you'll start to understand everything that goes on. Um, a key element is management and training uh, and networking and speaking to people. So come along to my WFM events that they are re they really are a great opportunity to meet new people get a feeling for different areas of the, the services that we provide. So um, I would do that. And then if you can, and, and, and time willing, think about some courses and, and education, either the qualifications that BIFM do, or there, there's plenty of other qualifications out there that are related to FM. So that would be, okay. that would be my advice. Okay, excellent. And um, so I, I don't know whether you probably covered this, but you said you've worked kind of client side, supply side, and as a consultant as well. Yes. Was that always your intention? Okay. Um, I, I, I knew having been client side for a certain amount of time that for me to do better at my job on client side, it would be useful to experience the other side and see what the challenges are so that even if I did go back client side, I could see what my suppliers, their challenges were. Uh, and it was, it, it is different. And it obviously it does depend on on the teams within those groups and the people and, and their uh, abilities, but it's also understanding what other pressures they are in organizations in, in you know, that they're there to make work for the business to make a profit, for example, and, and getting that more understanding there, the pressures that, that they receive. So. Um, it was a really good experience. It was good doing consultancy as well. So it gave me an opportunity to work in different sectors. And then I've sort of pulled all that experience together to, to where I am now, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we've got a really good question here asking how we can attract more young people into the profession, which I know is something we, we often talk about. But what's your what's your view on that? I mean, it's I mean, a career which has obviously served you, you really well. Um, how hmm. can we get other people to to understand that it's a great place to be? Um, it's 
Yeah, it's a, it's a difficult one because I know in education, it's not an obvious thing to jump into directly in facilities management, but then people are doing, you know, building services, building studies, construction, architecture, and all these, you know, even leisure management, which I know a lot of people do. you know and it's really useful to see and get their perspective on facilities management as well and how they work mm. you know, we, we call them millennials and no, no one no doubt will be moving into the cronials at some point um <laughs> so yeah it's going to be uh that's going to be interested in attracting those younger people on a completely different way of working mm. um and yeah and, and actually managing an office as well sorry kathy you know managing mm -hmm. an office now is such a broad range of people and how they work that we have to develop our offices to be able to suit everyone i was talking to someone yesterday who said you know obviously the the, the pandemic has been a really difficult time for a lot of businesses and and individuals but they they mm -hmm. said you know a, a silver lining of it has been that people are really focused on their workplace now and that they they're really desperate to get back to or many people are desperate to get back to a workplace so do mm -hmm. you think that the pandemic has increased our uh, kind of a, a drive that people want to um would might want to work in in facilities management or workplace management um yeah it's a really difficult question it's going to be really interesting to see how the world of property changes we still need it as a profession you know maybe we need slightly less space maybe we need more um you know if we're gonna if we ever get hit with a pandemic again um but i think now we'll be offering places of work i, I always use the, the my way of thinking is that i want to provide offices that people want to come to work in so everyone a lot of people have experienced working from home and the, and the pressures and issues there but yet some people say it's a lot more efficient they're not traveling for a couple of hours a day so maybe there's going to be a combination of, of that i'm sure um but people do like to interact with people uh they do work better when they're consulting with each other so we need to make sure that uh, attract people to the offices to be able to do that but then also make sure everyone's still connected with the people that are working from home and that's that's mm. the big that's the big thing for me, I think, is making sure we keep people connected. Yeah, that, and it can be really challenging. I've heard people talk about how the workplace is going to be much more of a sort of social collaborative hub. And that the, now that the home working mm. model has been proved to some degree, um, people will feel more comfortable about working from home. Yeah, a lot of it will be our clients as well. You know, I know our clients like to meet, meet our staff. So, and, um, you know, we've used hoteling and agile working in the past. Um, we may become more agile and more on, and agile means so many different things to so many different people. Yeah. But there's definitely going to be some change. But I, I don't see us changing that fast. You know, yeah. 20 years ago, we were talking about the paperless office, but we're still printing millions of sheets of paper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I guess this brings us to talk a little bit about um, the the pandemic and how you're managing to get get back to some kind of normality in the office. There's been quite a number of questions, as you probably know, about um, about that, particularly around the use of data and sensor technology and how it can impact FM in sort of post COVID times. Is that something mm -hmm. that you're looking at to help the return to work? Um, it's definitely something we're looking at. For sure. Um, um, when we relocate to a new office, I've no doubt we'll certainly be using more of that technology. Um, having we, there's a system we call which is sort of single pane of glass, where all the different systems are all come into one place. Uh, as for an FN can manage all that information, whether it's temperature and air control and um, um, all the many things that go on. Where cleaning is a typical one, where we spend a lot of time sending cleaners around cleaning toilets every half an hour. But actually, some of those toilets might not have been used. So actually, those kind of sensors and knowing where the busy areas are to send their cleaners to where where cleaning needs to happen, I've no doubt that will be really useful. So definitely a technology that's going to take off. Um, mm. The facial recognition, um, people walking into offices now is a big big new change in technology. 
Um, I've seen some of that in place. Some are using thumbprints now rather than passes and access passes. Some are using iPhones. So, yeah, there's a lot of technology. It's a fast moving world. Um, so, what, what else are you the job quite interesting? Yes. What else are you putting in place then to to manage that return to work at Lazard? Uh, we've got we well, one of the things we're using is trying to use our existing technology. So actually where we've got our, our holiday system where people can book to work from home we're now arranging that so those people book in to work so they're now booking to say when they're coming to work that's a useful tool for us to, to see who's going to be in the office to make sure the office isn't too busy um so that's one of the things we're doing um but there's not huge change we're currently looking at our meeting room booking system actually looking at hoteling and and, and those desk booking type services which I'm sure will come into play at some point in the future. Mm. Um, but it's not going to be, I don't think there's going to be huge change within our office. In, not in the first, not in the next 12 months. What about managing social distancing in the in the space? Mm -hmm. How are you doing that? Yeah, and I think I, I hear from a lot of people how confused they are now that um, Boris has said that it should be one metre plus potentially <laughs> um, at one metre. In theory, all our staff could come back to the office because they all sit 16, at least 1.6 metres apart. Um, mm -hmm. But actually, if you read the text and the government advice, it's saying we'd refer you to stay at two metres. You're, you're a lot less risk. Um, and for our staff being health and safety uh, and the health of our staff being most important, we want to keep the two metres. So when we do return to work, we will have um well we sort of and the americans call it checkerboard we're going to have a, a system in place where people are sitting every other desk basically mm -hmm. um working on rotation systems in the office and out of the office reduced number of people in meeting rooms um but there are some common parts that are really tr tricky to manage toilets for example um where we're really actually saying you know we, health and safety says use ppe as your as your last resort to risk um, they are places where PPE is going to have to be used, such as masks. And we're exactly what we're having to do anyway on, on, on transport. What about lifts and things like that? Because that's always a bit of a, a pinch point, isn't it? Yeah, well, I'm hoping people use the stairs more. Um, <laughs> bit tricky, in, bit tricky in some of these tall buildings. We've got a, a, an office in New York, it's 70 floors, and we're on the 66th floor, so they can't walk. <laughs> And they're rest they're restricting it, I think, to four people in the lifts, one in each corner. Uh, they're going to be queuing for hours just to get into the building. Mm. I think it's a building that holds sixty thousand people or something daft. Um, we're only on seven floors, so it's not so bad. We've got ascending one staircase, descending another to keep the distance. Um, there is lifts, people that need to use them, uh, and and signs up saying, you know, beware of the social distancing. Um, it's interesting. I've seen so many different signs, but we've gone with a, we've almost gone with our own brand. It's a particular colour we've gone for in a particular colour scheme. Because so I've seen some, some really poor uh, versions of arrows mm. in written in hazard tape and cut up, and, and it just <laughs> for for our office being best in class, we couldn't be seen to have a, a building with bits of tape everywhere. Um, mm. So we've 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 tried to keep it. You know, everyone knows what what the rules are. So just a little reminders here and there uh, and showing where people could way finding in the office, but keeping it. We still want to attract people to come to the office, not put them off. Yeah. So how do you balance that? Those kind of new requirements brought in by the pandemic with also mm -hmm. cost constraints brought in, obviously, by the same pandemic. How do you balance that? Uh, that yeah, um, it really has just been continual consultation with their employees to, to find out what their needs are and how they feel about coming to the office. We've done various surveys that, you know, we've got a few people that are sitting at home in a flat on their own, not talk to anyone or, or they're sharing flats. And actually we've got some um, issues around, you know, two people in different banks can't be saying anything on a phone in front of each other. <laughs> uh, compliance issues that we've had to deal with. So, um, yeah, it, the, each one has got little challenges, but most most things can be resolved um, by talking to people and then applying that. And yeah, 
Absolutely. I'm, I'm conscious we've probably come to the end of our allotted time. I, I promised 30 minutes, so I'm kind of keen to stick to that. So thank you, Jason. That was uh, really insightful. Thank you to our audience as well for some um, great questions. I'm sorry we didn't get uh, to the last couple of them. And sorry also for leaving you in the lurch earlier there with my virgin outage. Um, as I said at the beginning, I hope it's going to be the start of a regular series of, of interviews. So um, if you run a major site in the capital or you know someone who does and would be interested in taking part, um, then please do get in touch. My email address is on the community section of the IWFM website. So thank you very much, Jason. Thank you very much, Cathy. Look forward to the next interviews. Mm -hmm.